And now joining us on the program tonight is the former chairman of IPAC, Chief Ame Peter. Good evening, Chief. Now, the, the news is everywhere talking about uh, the president's forged certificate and, of course, the release of the certificate from the Chicago State University. And in a post on X, the minister, talking about the Minister of Aviation, Afesus Kayama, said Atiku was holding on to every single straw that resembles a lifeline, you know, having, uh, when he said Chicago State University had confirmed Tinubu attended the institution. What's your take on this? And what does it portend for the PDP and Atiku Abubakar going into the Supreme Court? I think, first of all, I want to, have to commend the, the, the intention of uh, Atiku Abubakar to announce the certificate circuit that has been on for over 30 years. Uh, if we want to look at the background, in, in 1999, they were submitted their form to INEC and later said, it was not Chicago, Chicago University, right? Or Chicago State University. <laughs> I was trying. What was looking at? Sorry. What was looking at? By 2023, when he was going to submit another new document, that he would have submitted the, the, the original authenticated certificate from, uh, from Chicago State University. That didn't happen. The certificate again became a controversy in the election. And people were really worried with what has happened. And if you look at... ...whether Polar Tinubu attended the University, Chicago State University, the facts that are on ground now is the fact that what Tinubu submitted in INEC in Nigeria today, it does not tally with what has been left in, um, um, discovered in the Chicago State University. So one of the grounds for this qualification of an election is that when the candidates submit first certificate to the Independent National Electoral Commission. So I, I think so far so good that people have done what is right. And people have been able to pursue this to a logical conclusion because one is the best instance of our country. It is even the best interest of the electoral process for us to finally know what 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 are the discrepancies between what has been submitted and what is now currently being um, given their, 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 their position in the United States of America. Because we cannot build our nation on the 40 foundation. I think we have done what we needed to do. Uh, Nigerians are seeing the facts. Nigerians are examining the facts. They are going through it and trying to make sure that whatever is brought into them, they have proper information to be able to disagree and uh, look at issues. Going to the Supreme Court. These matters were already brought before the um, uh, uh, appeal court. And it was well deliberated and discussed. So I don't think it's just like introducing new evidence. It's like it's supportive evidence to be able to prove that what is with the, the National Independent National Electoral Commission is not what was found in the file in but, Chicago but, but, State University. But, but Chief, Chief, the, the Chicago State University's Office of the Registrar actually affirmed that, you know, uh, Bola Sinembu indeed attended uh, the university uh, from August 1977 through June 1979 and was awarded a Bachelor of Science <coughs> in Business Administration with honors on June 22, 1979. Although there's some discussion in some quarters about, you know, the transcripts, you know, talking about the Southwest College transcript that Tinubu used to get admitted to Chicago State University belongs to a female. And a lot of people question the authenticity of the transcript because of the many errors in it, such as date and social security number. And we also know that Section 463 of the Criminal Code stipulates a three-year imprisonment sentence for f forgery, uh, while Section 362 to 364, you know, of the Penal Code address forgery offenses with penalties reaching up to 14 years of imprisonment. Does this mean that Atiku can get justice at the Supreme Court once more? Why well, we don't want to preempt the court? Why well, we don't want to say what the court will do? But what we know, what is on ground, is the fact that I don't want to look at the transcript that was that, 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 that they are still brought to Chicago State University. I don't want to look at the details of the, the college that he attended in Lagos. Because those details are I smell in, in controversies, and I don't want to look at all of this. What I'm looking at, what I think we wanted to prove, was the fact that whatever that was submitted to INEC is not 
the product of Chicago State University. Even if you attended the university, that what we have to to prove is a case of forgery. So it's going to bring and and there are, there are cases, there are judgment from like many of the of, of the cause of the uh, how they call it of competent jurisdiction to say that if you are proving a, a forge that the certificate is forged, you must put the forge one and the one submitted side by side. The forge one and the original side by side. That's the only way you can know the what is forged and what is not forged. What is trying to prove? I think he has got it. What he has got it. Whatever anyhow people want to turn the story, anyhow people want to be able to keep the information. That is not Article's problem. What Article wants is that whatever that was submitted in 1999, whatever that was submitted in 2023, uh, were not what a product that already came from Chicago State University. So, as uh, the former chairman of you know Interparty Advisory uh, uh, Council (IPAC), what would be your message, your personal message to INEC on this issue? You said what? As a former chairman? As a former chairman of IPAC, what would be your submission? Well, you, you said the article I just made his own. He just talked about, made it clear that it was not beyond, the, beyond getting justice from Supreme Court. It's just to show that the certificate submitted by uh, the president is not <laughs> in alignment with what he, was that he submitted uh, to INEC. Now, for you as a former chairman of IPAC, what would be your message going forward to INEC? Uh, my member, the message is that we must build our, uh, our country. One of the things I was saying was to look at how to build credible, fair, and transparent uh, electoral processes for election. And I must speak clearly that the like what IPAC did in the states to you know to get involved into um, in the intra-party inter -party activities of two parties that are just in power was not how what the essence why IPAC was formed. IPAC was best to make our electoral process transparent, to make it represent the true wishes of the people. And for me, going forward on this issue, it's better these issues, the issue, issue is laid to rest on the Supreme Court. Let the Supreme Court probably look at these issues and look at where, you know, the rights, because we can't tell the Supreme Court what to do. But one thing we, we must know, court of public opinion is key. And, and, and whatever the Supreme Court is doing, over 14 million out of those who voted, did not vote for political. And the Supreme Court must look at the views and look at the document presented before them, and then put it side by side, and then try to look if it is in their best interest of Nigeria for we, for us as a country to continue to progress in error. We cannot continue to progress in error when we have generation yet unborn and generation growing up to be able to give them direction on what direction or what to do to make sure that our, our country works. Because we can't be bad example or try to create an example for those who are coming and then make it feel like on moral grounds that we have no authority to be able to tell them what to do. So in my mind is that the facts should speak for, this, for itself. And when, when those documents are brought in, they will bring uh, the satisfactory copy of what uh, Mola and Ahmed Tinubu submitted to INEC and then put it side by side. Because the court doesn't just take up the decision on the, on, the, on the ground of law. The court must also take the decision based on morality, based on truth, and based on facts. And if the facts are, are, are together, and if what's submitted, they are, you know, and they are procedural flaws and they are contradictory markings that are not in line with the, or the, or the document that are given uh, authentication, then uh, the, 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 the decision must be taken and so that Nigerian can move on so that we can start to talk of how to build our economy and build a society that will respect the rights and interests of our people. Thank you so much, uh, High Chief Ahmed. There, we were talking to the former chairman of Inter-Party Advisory Council, uh, Chief Ahmed. Thank you so much for your contribution on the show tonight. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.